Hello, online art teachers. My name is Tim Needles, and we are here today to talk about my book, Steam Power. So I'm going to share some of the important elements that you need for a great Steam classroom, some of my favorite projects, some of my favorite technologies, um, and some of the takeaways that really make it uh, even better once you kind of get settled. So the book is available if you want to follow up from anywhere books are sold or from ISTE, and I hope you all have a fantastic conference. Steam Power. Engaging with Creativity Online with Tim Needles. What I'm here today to help you with is to uh, share some STEAM learning, some principles, some projects that can be done in online learning, in hybrid, and in the classroom uh, that are equitable. Uh, they use free resources, free technologies. They can be done with any age group from kindergarten to high school and even college. So these are things that I've done that are engaging, they're fun. Um, and they make for great art. So um, I'm a high school teacher. I teach uh, art and media in Smithtown, New York at Smithtown High School East. I've been teaching for over 22 years, um, and I wrote this book here, BAM, Steam Power, uh, from ISTE, uh, and the book has 18 um, lessons in all different types of technology, and it go, goes over the STEAM mindset and how to build a STEAM program and how to elevate that with things like collaboration and connections and authenticity. So we'll go over some of those things today. Um, and we are going to really focus on things that you could use um, this school year uh, right away and implement without a lot of work. So these are things that are kind of tested. They work really well. They're fun. They're engaging and students react well to them. So the acronym STEAM is really popular now in education. It stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Math. But basically, it's interdisciplinary learning. And that could be anything from a digital drawing or painting that uses art and technology together, like this example I made for the Getty Challenge of making myself into a Van Gogh painting, to a project that uses all the disciplines, like this example, where we created murals with National Geographic and the Weiland Foundation to support water ecology and conservation. So oftentimes when I uh, talk to audiences, one of the first things I need to remind people is that even though STEAM may be a fairly new acronym in education, it's a really old idea, right? This has been going on since the Renaissance because there's no better example of a STEAM master than Leonardo da Vinci. He was really someone that had mastery in every single one of these disciplines, science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Um, and, you know, even though it's a... Uh, seems obvious to us as art teachers, I often have to explain why art should be integrated into STEM learning, right? And the number one reason is creativity, right? That's going to be a big part of your STEAM mindset is really finding ways to engage students in creative thinking and promote creativity in the classroom and in the larger school and community, right? Because that's what we as art teachers are naturally doing anyway. And this is important for us as art teachers because we also have to advocate for the arts and sharing this information is vital. After all, it was Albert Einstein that said, imagination is more important than knowledge. Creative risk and innovation is an intrinsic part of making art. I try to promote that every day is another opportunity to be creative in my classes, and I spread that message wherever I go. So art also helps us communicate ideas, right? It's a language, and it adds a level of clarity for visual thinkers. So incorporating elements like writing sketch notes could really help connect STEAM principles. And using art history could make a big impact. You know, in incorporating the arts also really helps students synthesize the learning because they need to do something else with it to make it into art. And in order to do that, they need to understand it better. It often takes a little bit of work to help other people understand, you know, how to actually promote creativity in real hands-on ways that could be effective. And one of the keys to understanding this is knowing the creative process. So the creative process is different for everyone, but in general, it begins with brainstorming and thinking up ideas and then incubating them, letting them cook, and then finally making, which is one of the pivotal parts. We know that really well as our teachers. And then evaluating and revising. This might be the most understated thing, but the most important in the process, right? You need to critique the work. You need to look at it. You need to understand it and make revisions. And then finally, they're sharing. One of the interesting things I learned in doing the research for my book is that the creative process and the scientific process are really, really similar. So we always begin with creativity, but let's look at some other elements that are really important in having a good STEAM mindset. And those are failure, curiosity, 
designed and fun. Now there's other elements that are important, but these are my top five. So failure is a funny thing to talk about when we're discussing steam mindset, but it's a really important part of the creative process, especially changing the way we traditionally think of it, right? So it was Thomas Edison that said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work when he was making the light bulb. I recently presented a TEDx talk on the topic of creativity, and here's some of what I had to say about failure. One of the problems with being creative is that it's uncomfortable. It's a risk, right? We're afraid of judgment. No one wants to, to be judged. And judgment is the first thing that will stop creativity every time. So if you want to be creative, you need an environment that's really open and friendly and accepting. And a lot of that actually comes from within us, right? We tend to judge ourselves more than other people even judge us. So you have to be forgiving and give yourself permission to make mistakes. Failure is actually your friend as an artist, right? You learn more from failure than you ever would from success. And you need to understand that failure is part of the process. It's part of the creative process. You need to fail forward. You need to understand and reflect on what happened and what went wrong. And then you need to learn from that. So I always encourage my students to fail big, to make big mistakes early on because it's going to lead to the biggest learning. And that's really pivotal. You know, you need to accept failure and change the way you think about it. You can find the full TEDx talk on YouTube, but the idea is that we as teachers want to model some of this behavior for students to help them. Next up is design. And this is something that as our teachers were really comfortable with because the elements and principles of design are part of every good classroom. But it's important to remind students that design is something that's all around us. The cars we drive, the things we wear are all designed by people and design is part of everyday life. So design thinking is a way to actually use design and bring empathy in front of it. So it's by learning from people and studying what's around you before you start the design process. We find patterns, we implement the design principles, and then we make it tangible. And again, reiterate or edit constantly. It's all about revision. And then there's curiosity. This is one of the elements that we all have in common. Regardless of which discipline you're focused on, everyone is curious. And helping students promote their own curiosity is really important because it leads to self-directed learning. So we need to share our curiosities with students and help them find their own. I always say that being an artist is all about being curious. And finally, there's fun. Nothing makes a bigger impact in the classroom than having fun while you're learning. It's great for students, but it's also important for teachers too. We all were students and we can remember those times that we had fun at learning. And there's nothing quite like it. It's one of those things that really helps people become lifelong learners. Okay, now it's time to look at some STEAM projects. So as I mentioned, I have 18 projects that are in the book and I have a handful more that are on my website and on my YouTube page. But first we're gonna take a look at digital drawing because this is something that's really accessible and there's some great free tools and apps. So some of the ways that I've been using it during online learning specifically are projects like figure drawings at home, self-portraits, zentangles, perspective drawings, code drawing, Illustration Friday, which is a website that puts out a different theme each week, e-comics and artist trading cards, among others. I have a bunch of videos out there that will give some details on a bunch of these different types of lessons, but today let's go into one or two in detail. The first project is simple but really effective, and it's using digital drawing to do a daily journal. And I use this because I want to get a better sense of how my students were doing at home during the pandemic and how they were coping with stress and the anxiety of everything that was going on. And I wanted them to stay creative. So we began with traditional drawing and I had them just share how they were coping and some of the positive wellness tools that they were using. And that was really effective because we would share them out. And they evolved into more detailed digital drawings where students shared some of how they felt about the future and high school, especially students that were graduating in an untraditional way. Another digital drawing tool that's really great with social emotional learning is the mandala. So this is something that most art teachers all know, but there's a few great resources to do them online. So there's a free tool called Drawerlings that's an app or it's web-based, either one works. I really love using this tool myself because it's so fun and relaxing and you can see the creativity at work because there's a great tool that lets you see the playback. You could also save them online or to your device, which is nice. We also use Procreate, which is one of my students' favorite tools. 
Now this one does have a cost, but it's only $10. I like it because you could make your actual uh, process into videos. So it could show them as a GIF or an animation. And we also like to use the same idea with doing Zentangle. So this is something that pretty much every art teacher now knows. And it's uh, another meditative uh, wellness activity that really helps students relax. Next up, let's look at augmented reality. So this is an emergent technology, but it's really interesting and very creative. It has tons of potential for the future. We're going to take a look at ways to create a simple augmented reality drawing using the free app Quiver Vision. So it's Quiver for short, and it's a, a free tool that's an app, and it has handouts that the students could draw and color in and then turn into an augmented reality drawing. I published an article on this project in the September issue of School Art, so you could see that for more information. But I like using it because it allows students to actually photograph themselves with their augmented reality art piece and get really creative. The results are kind of amazing, regardless of whether you're in kindergarten or high school. I always use it in September to introduce the technology for Dot Day, which is based on Peter Reynolds' book, The Dot. And finally, we're going to look at video poetry. So this is a really elastic project that you could do in all different kinds of ways. But the traditional way that I've liked to do it is to start with limitations because they help inspire creativity. So I let students use four frames. It could be four images they drew or four pictures they took and then create a poem around it. So I'm going to show you how a quick demo using the Adobe Spark video app. So I like using this app because it's free and it's very easy to use. Of course, you could use lots of other tools to do this, but this one's very accessible and that's important in our current online hybrid teaching scenarios. We're gonna start by just hitting the red plus button once you open the app. And that's gonna bring you to a choice to start with your photos. So you could choose four photos, any photos you want. I already organized mine in a small folder. So it doesn't matter what order they're in because you could reorder them later. So it usually takes a moment or two for them to organize. And once they're visible, you could actually drag and drop them in whatever order you want. So you wanna just order the images first. And once you have that set, take a look at the small timer underneath the image. You will see it says two seconds now. I'm gonna just make it a little bit longer. So I know that it usually about five seconds or six seconds works well. And then you could press the plus button and actually just write in text. So I'm gonna write out my first line, looking out, and this is fairly easy. So I'm not gonna to move to the second image and I'm going to change that slider to five, just to be consistent and hit the plus button and add the second line, which is over the windswept dunes. And that looks pretty good, but I wanna make it a little bit smaller so the whole line fits. So here's where I will use the plus minus button. You see T plus, T minus. It looks okay the way it is, but I prefer to have it fit on one line. So I hit T minus and that's going to lower the text. Now I'm gonna go back to the first image and actually lower the text on that to make it smaller so it's more consistent. So once you understand that you're gonna do that, you're gonna just do that to each image. So here's the third image, and I hit the plus button and adding the third line of text, which is as the sun slowly set, and that looks pretty good, sets, there we go. And then I'm going to remember to make sure that I extend that image, and then number four, and now the final line over another summer day. Okay, and I make the text smaller. That looks pretty good. And just remember to consistently change the time. Okay, and now here's where I'm gonna add my credits. You could add any kind of credits you want to. Um, I'm just gonna add uh, my name and credit myself for the poem and the images. You could see that there's an option to um, give credit to some of the work if you're using images that are not your own or music that's not your own. I prefer to use uh, my own original images and music and the music is uncopyrighted so I could share this without an issue. And then usually I also like to add 
uh, when I created it, so August 2020. So that's the process. So we're pretty much complete. Let's take a look at what we have so far by hitting that play button on the bottom left. That looks pretty good. Um, that was our first draft. You could always still play and make any alterations you might want to. You could change the images or the text or the timing or the music. They have a lot of different music options uh, just within the app. You could also record a voiceover. So you see that little red button with the microphone. You could record audio for each frame and you could change the size as well. So it could be square or widescreen. And that is all little tweaks that you could change after the fact. Here, if you wanted to add a new slide for the title, you could just hit the plus button on the bottom right, and it could be just text, or if you want to add a image or video, that's possible as well. So I'm going to add a video just to show you how that works. Here is the video. You see on the bottom that there is some sliders, so if you want just a piece of the video to show, you could do that. I'm going to let mine play for the whole clip because it's pretty short and you add text in the same exact way. You hit that little plus button and you are going to write it out in the same way. This time it will just play over the video. So I am gonna actually just delete this slide. So you just click it and it says delete slide. And the last thing to do is to share it. So you see the share button up on the top right and I'm gonna save mine to the camera roll but you could also send it right to the social media which is nice or via text or email, and it sends us a link, not as the full video, which is terrific because it's not quite so big and clunky. It works really well. And success, there we have it. That's a complete video poem. That's one technique, but another way to do it is actually to start with video. So that could be a video of nature, like the example that I have here in a lesson, or it could be a video that's edited, or even video of the student's artwork, and then they can create a short poem to go over the video. I always like to show examples. So here's a poem that I wrote, a haiku, which is just a three line poem that I wrote with existing video that I had taken on my phone. It's that easy. It's also really great to share these video poems. You know, they're really interesting and National Poetry Month happens every April. So it's a great time to share. It doesn't need to be a poem. It could also be a short story. This is also a great way to work with an English class. You could also have students use this approach to talk about their own work and show the process. This is really good for people teaching AP art, especially with the new changes in the test, or you could use art history and have the students look at famous artworks and then use creative writing to talk about their feelings and what they convey. So it could be a great way to introduce the topic. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about how to elevate the STEAM learning to the next level, right? So these are elements and principles that will really help push it and make it more engaging and meaningful for students. So these are things that once you have a couple of different STEAM projects that you're working with in classes, uh, will really help you promote it and, and um, elevate the learning. So that's really helpful. The first thing is connection. You know, as humans, this is one of the things that's most important in life, our connections with the people that we care about. And as teachers, connection is really important to what we do. So finding a way to connect with students is essential and also, Connecting with other teachers and educators around the world. I mean, we are not alone. We do this together, and even when it's difficult, it really helps to have good connections. Next is collaboration, because working together really helps learning, and it helps social skills as well. Plus, it really helps support that fun aspect, oh, and yeah. online learning oh, should be fun never. as well. That's really <laughs> essential. Next is authenticity, and that both means personally and being your authentic self with your students, and trying to make your projects authentic. No one wants to be that art teacher that sees students throwing their work out on the way out of the classroom, right? Make the work count. Try to address real problems. They could be community, school-wide, or worldwide. And lastly, there's sustainability. That's not just in the global sense, making sure that we have a sustainable world, but also in the personal sense, meaning mindfulness and wellness, right? It's really important to make self-care a priority. I know for teachers, it's really difficult. Certainly it is for me, but we need to model our own wellness with students, right? Do what you love, 
you know, for many of us, that's making art and share that love and that passion for making art because it's really going to make a difference. You know, share ways that you cope with the pandemic and you cope with stress. And that's going to really make a big difference with your students. And there's traditional practices like meditation, but there's also really simple things like just getting out into nature. For me, one of the things that really works is just going out and being quiet and enjoying the nature around me. So, you know, whether it's watching the sunset or just enjoying a walk through the woods, this could be a really powerful tool. And it's the kind of thing that we as teachers need to give ourselves because this has been a really difficult situation and we often need to decompress. It's also always really great to share some of the process of creating artwork yourself with your students because that can make a really big difference. When you're a participant and you're showing them that you're going through the process yourself, it sends a really important message that this is authentic and you really care about what it is you're doing. So don't forget to share. As we move through this year, it's really important to be mindful of the impact you have as an educator. Hopefully now you're excited about all these STEAM projects, so let's talk resources. As I mentioned, there's a bunch of videos out. My YouTube is a great source, and I have some up on ISTE and my TEDx talk as well. Uh, and then, of course, there is my book, STEAM Power from ISTE, uh, and that is a great resource. I wrote the book for teachers, knowing that they have a tight time schedule and that you wanted it to be as interesting and packed with information as possible. So I wanna thank you guys for spending this time with me and uh, feel free to reach out. I'm on social media at Tim Needles on every social media. I tweet and I'm on Instagram and Facebook, of course, LinkedIn, TikTok. You know, you wanna do some dance videos with me, I'm all up for it. Um, and I, I wish you all good luck with these projects. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'm always available. Uh, and if you do any of these projects, I would love to see what you're doing and comment on it and share it out. So, you know, please share some of what you're doing using the hashtag or any of the social media. Be kind, be creative, and change the world. Thank you so much. And of course, thanks again for supporting the arts in schools.